Hi guys, Rob 46 here, working ourselves back to MotoGP 20 on the Xbox One X. Let's continue with managerial career. Um, let's see if we can get a better chief engineer. Um, oh. Makoto is the one I'm going to go for. C+. Maybe C++, but I think here... Now that's, we'll keep it as that is uh, with our data analysis or analyst even. Uh, they're still going. Okay. Um, right. Seven laps around Argentina. Extreme difficulty. Let's go do this and uh, get on with round three. So one and a half seconds I've just gone pole, but I want to see what happens when we run out of fuel. I mean, we, we know what's going to happen, but I just want to experience it myself. Um, so we'll continue going. It should run out on this lap. And I have done all of the development tests at this round for the bike, so that is good. Yeah, the, the bike's feeling awesome around here. It's, I don't know, I seem to have clicked with the Moto 3s a lot quicker this year than uh, in previous games. I don't know how that's happened because Moto 3 is usually my weakest class, but I don't know. I seem to have clicked with it a lot better this year. I just wish that uh, the riders didn't look so big on the Moto 3 bikes. I think the riders are literally the same size no matter what class you're in. Whereas obviously in real life where they're a bit younger, you still get some people that are um, obviously tall. And when they get too tall, that's when they tend to move up a class. I mean, when you look at someone like uh, Bulliger, who's obviously in Moto 2 now, but when he's in Moto 3, he was too big for him, so he couldn't get tucked in. We're not going to run out of fuel on this lap, and we're actually going even quicker. So I think I'm about to set the personal best around here. But we'll, we'll keep going until the fuel runs out. That's what we're going to do. 47 6, 1.2 quicker than my own lap time. Wow, okay. Right, fuel will be running out on this lap for sure. flashing red now, telling me that it was very, very low. Right, it's going to go soon, it's probably going to happen on this straight. Oh, it's same zero. Oh, it's dying, it's dying. Oh, it's coughing and spluttering, it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> There we go, that's what happens then. The engine has died. We've got a little bit of drives just uh, from the momentum we had on the straight, but uh, we'll pull over. I thought they, in the video that they showed, it was, you got a little, oh, he's doing it now, okay, when you stop. Yeah, he's not happy. That's the end of the second and last qualifying Look session. at that. And we can finally see that is a, a much quicker lap time than what I did three. in MotoGP 19. Much quicker. All right, let's go race. Seems ready. It's always difficult to predict the results of a Moto3 race, but the riders we're seeing right now definitely seem to be the favourites. So, I, when I'd done the race distance uh, in the development tests... The soft tyres lasted a lot longer than I was expecting, so we'll go full tank of fuel, soft rear and soft front, because I know that they're going to last the distance. See, everyone else has gone for mediums or 
Antonelli's gone for a hard race. Riders just have one more thing on their mind now, being the first to cross the finish line. Okay, let's see what we can do. There we go. Not a good start. Alright, so we're in P11, which is way down the order from where we started. We've lost 10 positions off the, the start. I'll mix them up. Okay, on to the back straight. Already up to uh, eighth place. Now we're up to uh, sixth. Find Antonelli. Down into the braking zone a little bit later than everyone else. But we've got the bike stopped. And we've got a good run out as well. So, fourth place, fifth place even. Now we're in fourth. Now we're up to third. So we've recovered well. Obviously, it's a bit overcast here, but uh, yeah, the soft tyres are working as they should at the moment. Let's just hang with these guys for a little bit. We run the outside of Fogia and we've got him as well. In fact, we're in the lead. We're leading already. But not for long. Oh, we've lost two positions there. Nearly three. Okay, that's the first lap done. So Lopez leading. We're in third. I'm going to go. If I can get the cut back through turn one. I don't know if that's worked. So then we've got second. Not for long, night. And... Oh, come on. Around the outside and back up the second place. Oh, not for long. Side by side. We're back down the third. Oh, what did he do there? That's not the first time I've had that happen. Where the AI have just thought, I'm going to sit up randomly. There's no reason for him to sit up there. Was it because I was invading his personal space? And he got a bit freaked out? I don't know. It was weird. Well, we're in second place. So, I've done a little bit of digging. Um, and basically went back to my pro career on MotoGP19. I went back to the Moto3 video which had Argentina in it. I just wanted to compare the lap times of the AI because apparently they're obviously quicker this time. Um, there was only one rider on MotoGP19 and I think it was Darren Binder. No, it was uh, Antonelli who was on pole. He did a 150. Everyone else was over that. Uh, in the, like, the 151s and that. In this game, a lot more of them were in the 150s. So yeah, they may be quicker. However, I think one thing that wasn't taken into consideration with the new physics and that, the players are even quicker as well. So maybe that's why the AI don't seem, you know, as quick as we were hoping because in fact the players are even quicker again. So I'm, I'm going a few seconds quicker than what I did on MotoGP19. So I think maybe that's something to do with it. That's my theory at the moment anyway. I don't know what it's going to be like in Moto2 or MotoGP. I've done obviously some historic races. Uh, I've done one with the historic four strokes. 
and that was a difficult race on 120% around Herrera. Um, I struggled holding on to the lead in that, that race. So maybe they are in fact even quicker again in the MotoGP class. But we'll find out when we get there. And by the time we get there they might have done an update by then but we'll have to wait and see. Because beginning of May they're obviously doing an update to uh, update some of the deliveries and stuff. So we are past Lopez now. Just sat him up mid corner. Into the penultimate corner. Oh, Lopez has sent me a bit wide. And we've lost. No, that wasn't Lopez even. That was Masio. Now he's up to the lead. But Lopez has come through as well. They're neck and neck as they go towards turn one. Who's going to have it into turn one? Masia. Don't want to be doing that. Tyres are doing all right. I'll turn the power down to zero. What are you doing? <laughs> Why were you looking over your shoulder going around the corner? Save that for the straights. <laughs> it was a weird time to do that. I mean, we're back into the lead. That was very bizarre. In fact, he's, I think he's lost another place. But yeah, put the power mapping down to zero just to uh, build up a bit more range in the fuel. Now the last lap, we can definitely turn it up to two. And this is pulling away there a little bit. I think that is purely down to the power mapping. I have found that um, slipstreaming seems to work better in this game than it did in MotoGP 19. in Moto GP19 when you were towards the front in Moto3. The slipstream didn't really have much of an effect. And I know that the, the AI's bikes were quicker in a straight line on 150 120% even. Um, which is very frustrating. Okay. Through the final corner, end of lap 4, onto lap 5. Streamer this year, we are gaining. On the wrong side of him to get into the lead. It really cost us too much time. Through the kink, we will be able to. I don't even need to slip streamer. And we will need to because uh, I don't know what power mapping he's using, but a little bit quicker. The weird thing still happens if you press forward on your left analog stick. The rider sits up for some bizarre reason. Um, that was a, a weird thing in MotoGP 19 that seemed to have carried over. But yeah, I, I really wish that they'd bring back manual tuck. But I am getting used to not holding the uh, the Y button anymore. So I know that that just does uh, change the HUD. You can actually make the HUD smaller as well in the bottom right hand corner. In the options menu there is an option to uh, use a compact version. So it's like half the size of what it actually is now. I'd like to have all that information there for for my, well, just in general so that I can see what is happening, how much fuel we've got and stuff like that. Okay, we're about to start the penultimate lap. Still in second, still behind Jar Messia. That was a good run through turn one. I 
The group behind aren't that far behind. But yeah, last lap. Definitely going to turn it up to power lap in two, and then we're just going to kick it in there, see what we can do. I think we can win this. Feel fairly comfortable. Lopez still in third. But yeah, I do think that they could uh, do with making the Moto 3 AI anyway um, a little bit quicker again. But yeah, I do think it's just one of those things that maybe they weren't expecting the players to, to be as quick as we are. So yeah, just getting away a little bit, but we're starting to reel them in here. Got a better run out of turn 11. Right, we've got one corner and one lap to go. Power up to two. Let's do this. It is time to attack. there. It's probably going to be down the straight, I'd imagine, if we can get a good run through the kink. Or, just get him like that. Well, we did get a good run through the or oh, a little bit wide. But our uh, line of going around the outside to put us up the inside worked a treat. So we're in the lead now. Will Messia be able to fight back? I don't think he will. So another thing I've noticed more on this track, uh, coming down that back straight, when you get towards the, the hairpin, a good indication of when you need to start braking or think about braking, as you'll see that the rider just sit up by himself. So uh, yeah, if you are struggling with braking, just look out for something like that. Um, as a, a visual aid I don't necessarily do it as soon as he sits up I still wait a little bit because as soon as he sits up a little bit um, it's still a little bit too early but you can kind of gauge it from there well we are going to win we pulled away from this here tyres have lasted nicely I thought they would like I said I did do a uh, race simulation in FP3 and they did last but there we go I think that might have been my personal best lap of the race as well in the final lap it was 48-8 everyone race. else was in a 51 so a a graphic of the official results of the just finished Moto3 race oh there we go another win two achievements tyres and fuel complete 10 races with tyre wear and fuel consumption in Grand Prix Okay. Nice. So we've got 19 point lead. It's still not a big lead. But we've moved up to second in the team championship. But we're not going to get, this you know, we're not going to win it. See a lot of the lines as well. Uh, I'm assuming they just copied them over from MotoGP19. Just seen that way. Yeah, that was a good race. Enjoyed that. Right then. So, back to the menu. And, uh... Go on to the next round, so reputation has gone up as it would. Contract status secure. Well, I've won every race so far, so if it wasn't secure, I'd be very, very worried. Got over 51,000 credits now. 
So we've uh, got the research data. I mean, aerodynamics and electronics, we, we can't do anything about Emoto 3, so I don't know why we we get to get some um, points for them if we can't use them, unless they're going to carry on to Moto 2. But in previous games, that hasn't been the case. Um, four weeks left on the engine, one week left on the frame. So... We will do another race in this video. Um, same again, seven laps, extreme difficulty. And we're going to Hareth for the next round. Oh, wet practice and raining qualifying. So qualifying did not go well. I did not qualify. Um, I was quickest in FP3. However, um, yeah, I didn't actually do a lap in qualifying. I went out, but I kept invalidating it, and then just I just ran out of time. So we're starting at the back of the grid. It is dry. It will be vitally important to take the first curve perfectly. That's the son of the back at Haret. Seven laps around here. Not a good start again. Right, well, let's find out how good the, the AI really are by starting at the back of the grid. This was unintentional. Um, I didn't do this on purpose. It just... I kept invalidating my lap times. Um... I got tangled up with someone as well. So yeah, qualifying did not go to plan at all. And I had to go through Q1 because... Uh, yeah, because I only took, play, took part in uh, FP3 and FP1 and 2 were dry. So... Oh, someone's crashed there. Oh, like it. That was, well, that was Arbolino, but he went off track. Then he got forced out. Making up a few places. Oh, we're much later on the brakes. Are we getting it stopped? Yes, we are. That's a risky move, but it has paid off quite nicely. 17th place at the moment. Right, we're in the points. We're 15th place. Uh -oh. we went into the back of that uh, ATM Sasaski. And that's another two places. Another one, so we're up to 12. We're nearly inside the top 10. There we go, 11, just behind Vietti. Through Lorenzo corner. Oh, we've got a better exit, much better exit. So we're inside the top 10, we're in ninth place. Arena, Arena has just uh, done that weird sitting up thing again because I got too close to him. But yeah, ninth place. Alcova's just had a crash. Oh, and again. Oh, and someone else is down. Koffler. So there's been quite a few crashes in this race so far. So I try and get Nico Antonelli. Oh! Oh! So, well, he did try turning in on me. Oh, Cooney's down as well. Yuki Cooney has had a crash. Oh, Antonelli's had another crash. I think it's all kicking off back there. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, Cooper's had another crash. Okay, so quite a few crashes going on. In that incident between myself and Antonelli. But I was on the inside. Can we get his teammate Suzuki? We can. I've gone in too hot though. He didn't get back past though. That's a bit. Expecting him to get back up the inside. 
So, fifth place at the moment. Made great progress. There's actually eight laps around here. Okay, down to turn one. Out we go. We do get a good run out of Lorenzo Gorner. That's probably up to four. Hi, Mino. You can see a 48.9, 48.3 from me. So fast as like the race so far. Fanati's in second. And come on. Yeah, we've got third. Gonna force Mino out a wider little bit. So we're on the podium. The leader has uh, got a bit of a gap. That might may take some doing to try and close that down, but we've got to try and close down Fanati at the moment. We are much later on the brakes into turn six. Danny Pedroza corner. That is a. Uh, Made up quite a bit of time actually. So we've come to the end of lap three. Feeling strong again, considering I've done no dry practice. Because as you saw, FP3 was just wet track. Q1 and Q2 were raining. Warm up I didn't do. Um, the race is dry, so this is literally my first few laps on a very dry Hereth track. And uh, yeah, we're strong. Especially out that final corner. Can we get Fanati? I think we might be able to. Second place. Up to turn one. So now it's just Messia, we've got to try and close in. And Messia is my main championship rival at the moment. It's whether I can actually catch up to him though. What is the gap? One second. We know that we're stronger on the brakes into turn six. Danny Pedroza corner. So we should be able to take a bit of time out of him there. Still one second. But now we've closed that in a little bit. Tyres are okay at the moment. Aspar. Looking out to a split soon so we can see what the gap has come down to. It's definitely come down, but by how much? Only a couple of tenths of a second. Oh, he's out on the green there. He pulled away from Fanati as well, in fact. It looks like he's being caught by the group behind him. Yeah, we're really closing in on the Sia now. Just under six laps of fuel remaining. Well, it's nearly five and a half laps. New fastest lap of the race, 48-1. So we're on lap five. We've got just enough fuel at the moment. Nearly with Messia now. Really closing in. The gap is irrelevant. We are there. He's taking a wider exit. Should be about break him down to turn six. Yeah, we are later on the brakes. Oh, I've gone in a little bit too hot though. He's back through. Okay, that's fine. 
at least we know for next time, if there is going to be a next time. Right, a little bit wide for Nieto. Consider when we started at the back. It's uh, it's been a very strong race. Put me into the lead. It does. And we get it by the line as well. So if that was the final lap of the race, we would be fine. Oh, he's back underneath. I was expecting him to go a little bit wide there, but he didn't. Right on him. Six, all is well. We're in a good position. We've got plenty of fuel left. Going on the kerb didn't help, but we can pick up a bit of slipstream. Oh, that's a lunge. Oh, nearly into the back of him. So we've got a little bit of movement on the brakes there. Uh, yeah. We were way too far back there to even consider having a go. So we've got two laps to go. We're still in second place. He's still got a bit of fight left in him, but we've always got the option of putting the power mapping back up to two for the final lap. I think I've pretty much already figured out a good strategy for using the power mapping, definitely on lap one. Um, and then especially on the final lap as well. And then in between, obviously, just try and save as much fuel as you can so that you've got enough to do that on the final lap. And having a full, full tank of fuel doesn't seem to really be a hindrance in this game. Great for the penultimate time. Oh, I don't have another issue like last time, so I'll break a little bit earlier this time. I don't want to go into the back of him like we nearly did on the last lap. So, is it going to come down to the final corner on the last lap? Probably not. We should be able to get him before then. So, I don't know if I'm actually strong enough on the brakes to have a go into the final corner. If I can get a little bit closer through the next couple of corners, we'll have a little practice run just in case. We are very close now. I mean, we could have a lunge. We could have a lunge, but we could also maybe get him at the final corner. Don't get him to the line, but then obviously we can put power mapping on two as well if we need to. Okay. We're on him, we're on the wrong side though, again on the kerb. Through turn four. 
power mapping on to now. So come up to the straight. Oh no, I've messed up the exit a little bit there. And we actually popped a little wheelie, that didn't help. Close enough to have a lunge, I don't think so. Not quite. That's fine. There's still a couple places we can do this. I seem to be a bit stronger up through this corner. We're on the out outside though. It's worked, we're in the lead. Not for long. He's back up the inside through Aspar. He's gone a bit wide as we close back in. A bit wide through Nieto again. This might well come down to the last corner. And it's where I can get close enough. Oh yeah. We are closing. We're closing. Oh, oh no, I've damaged my bike. I've damaged my bike into the final corner. I've just clipped the back of him. Well, we're still going to win, but we have damaged our bike slightly. There we go. Oh! <laughs> That's what happens well, if you do a stoppy. So we won by half a second that time. Fastest lap of the race. 48-1. Oh, that was... Uh, that got a bit sketchy towards the end. Some people didn't finish. So we've got 24 point lead. Not quite a whole race wins worth at the moment. Yeah, we're never going to win the team championship when it's just one rider. Undoubtedly, it was a perfect day for him. In addition to the victory, his position also earns him 25 priceless championship points. That's a good race though. Another good race. Enjoyed that again. But yeah, I just messed up. Coming out of the penultimate corner, just got a little bit too close to him. Ended up with a bit of bike damage. But nothing too serious that it lost loads of drive. Okay. Well, there we go. Two more wins to our collection. But yeah, I, I do think that they could make the AI a little bit quicker again. Especially considering the bike isn't even fully upgraded. There we go, guys. I'm going to leave this video here. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for more content. And I shall see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to wash your hands and stay safe. See you.